Julia left for Munich. Munich, at the turn of the century, was not only a southern refuge for her, but the center of the arts, the theater, and the bohemian life in general. Julia and her children rented an apartment in the Schwabing Quarter. It was as if she were finally free of all the requirements of etiquette and the pressure of Hanseatic society, with all of its conventions and narrow morality. Here, late in life, she would realize her dreams of creating an intellectual and artistic salon. At 43, she is still a beauty. She did not fulfill the conditions of her husband's last testament. The children were not carefully supervised. On the contrary, Carla, whom the father considered a quiet child, already had an admirer at 14 and began a career as an actress. Lulu's fiancé appeared to be just as much in love with the mother as with the daughter. Both brothers went to Italy. For Thomas, oddly enough, it was a particularly ascetic experience, as revealed in the following quote. To eradicate a bad desire, to free myself of sexuality, keep the dog on a short leash. The stay in Rome and Palestrina made both brothers into writers. Heinrich wrote his first novel, In the Family. Thomas started what would later become Buddenbrooks. Back in Munich, both lead a bohemian life for the next 10 years. Mark Strasser 5, one of Thomas Mann's many apartments. By the end of a decade, there would be a good dozen more, all similar, always on the top floor. The two brothers began to experience the results of their Lübeck inheritance and all that the senator's threats sought to prevent. They would become artists. At the age of 20, Katja Pringsheim married Thomas Mann. The prince had found a princess who very quickly provided two children, one after the other, Erika and Klaus. Hedwig Pringsheim, Katya's mother, wrote, Katya remains apparently satisfied with her two children, but her husband is a real dandy who does not tolerate much. The country house, with the initials THM over the entrance, was built by Thomas Mann in 1908. It was the first of many such villas he would own and was home to the happiest period of his life. His artwork is inspired by an apparent dichotomy, how to embrace the bourgeois life and to still be an artist. With the success of Buddenbrooks behind him, before him lay a future as Germany's eminent national author. Munich in the twenties. Thomas Mann, shortly before the outbreak of the war, moved into his new house in Herzog Park, after the success of his latest novel, The Magic Mountain, he received international attention that included receiving numerous guests and fulfilling worldly duties, which he carried out with an iron discipline. The youngest son, Michael, remembers him moving on silent wings. This was manifested in the daily life of the Mann residence through coolness, distance, and an everyday formality that bordered on the ceremonial. Another son, Golo, writes in his memoirs, The authority of the father was enormous. We would always be quiet in the morning while he was working, in the afternoons while he was reading, and then napping, and then in the evenings because he was busy once again. A man of great instability, he barricaded himself within a silent life of letters. That which moved him most deeply, he could only divulge to his journals or transform into art. He precariously entrenched himself behind the facade of a conventional bourgeois household. He wrote in his journal, A life that conceals a secret. And toward Katya, he felt, 
My gratitude for your kindness regarding our sexual relationship and my sexual problems is deep and genuine. The number of children increased during this time. In addition to Erica and Klaus are Golo, Monica, Elizabeth, and Michael. The harmony in the photos disguises the many conflicts within the house. In front of the camera with the favorite child, Elizabeth, this staged fatherly pride hides the tension-laden relationship with Klaus that began during this time. Thomas Mann was sexually attracted to his own son. Delighted with Klaus, I find it only natural that I am in love with my son. Die Verliebtheit scheint äh, dann auch sehr schnell abgekühlt zu sein, ja? Äh, und zwar spätestens zu dem Zeitpunkt, da Thomas Mann feststellt. This attraction appeared to be short-lived. In any case, it was much later that Thomas Mann realized that his son had developed into a homosexual. During this time, Klaus became aware of his father's tendencies, his incestuous and homosexual desires, mixed with paternal pride. Beginnt sich selbst Vorwürfe zu machen. Ja, jemand wie ich sollte selbstverständlich keine Kinder in die Welt setzen. <laughs> Imagine somebody such as that, my, myself, for example, actually having children. This shouldn't happen. One could say that the homosexual son was simply projecting a homosexual identity of his father, mixed with his own self-hatred and contempt for him. In review of four, the two oldest children of Thomas Mann, Erika and Klaus, provocatively described the cultural scene of the 20s that they encountered. With Gustav Grünkens and Pamela Wedekind, they act out their own drama, in their lives as well as on the stage. Erika's relationship with the Wedekind's daughter is considered scandalous. In his first literary attempt, Klaus portrays his open homosexuality. In any case, Klaus was determined to get the truth out of his father, to entice him to come out of the closet and to admit who he truly was, what he truly felt. Thomas Mann denied it. With the rise to power of Hitler, the Manns began their exile. They emigrated to the United States. The dissatisfaction in Germany was so great that Hitler had to do something about it. In spite of all this, however, I am optimistic about the final victory of democracy. Thomas Mann, the unpolitical reactionary. At the beginning of the 20s, he had advocated against a democratic republic. He now hesitated yet again, until finally declaring himself in agreement with the anti-fascistic emigres. Above all else, it was Klaus who influenced the father with his own political beliefs, and who wrote with Erika that Thomas Mann represented an alternative Germany. In 1941, after a brief residence in Princeton, Thomas Mann built himself another villa in Pacific Palisades, a quiet suburb of Los Angeles. It was here that many other German exiles established themselves. Thomas Mann was already the undeniable and leading representative of German culture. Today, we feel that the United States has become the great stronghold of that culture of which Europe has was once a home. Less recognized, and at this time without any means, Heinrich Mann was on the run from the Nazis. He was forced once again to flee from exile in France, and came to America in 1940. In this, the last chapter of his life, he was to sink into ignominy and poverty. Nellie Kruger, a Berlin barmaid, was his companion in exile. He finally married her in 1939, and she ended her life in drink. Alone and living in obscurity, Heinrich died in 1950. 